community of immigrants. I think that's something that we celebrate here. We have a really, really proud Italian uh, immigrant uh, heritage in this community. Uh, immigrants used to come to this community not knowing English, and all they would know is to say, which way EJ? Uh, for, and for the Endicott Johnson factory. And this was a place where a lot of people from all over the world came to New York City and famously said, which way EJ? And they were they came here, and uh, I think it's amazing that generations later we're still uh, carrying on those traditions. And of course, uh, Endicott is also the uh, the birthplace of uh, IBM, uh, which at one point uh, was a dominant uh, international company. And of course, uh, those two companies and others together uh, really were the foundation of the community of the Southern Tier of New York. <laughs> To be perfectly honest, you know, I'm old enough to remember when Italian people weren't welcome at IBM way back in the day. A lot of the Italians that moved up here on the north side uh, weren't welcome there. As a matter of fact, down below North Street, uh, it used to be right in the Covenants. Uh, they wouldn't, you could not sell to any black people or Italians. Uh, it was right, right in the Covenant. Unico started in Waterbury, Connecticut, 100 years ago. They do charitable work. We have culture as a big part of our initiative, and uh, so we have meetings monthly, and we get a speaker to usually talk about famous Italian physicians, scientists, um, talk about Italian architecture. I think that uh, the success of Endicott Johnson, where, where at least from my, from my cultural perspective, the Italian people were welcome, they worked hard, and then people saw the success that they had, and so, um, so they said, gee, you know, maybe those Italian people are worth having around. Some, you know, would say that IBM not only has done a lot for the community, but helped uh, build and found this community. Uh, and so the same could be said about uh, Endicott Johnson uh, with, the, with the impact and the legacy. They had everything for you. They had the country club, which, which had all sorts of things going on for you. They had sports, they had sports banquets. They, they would have rides, all sorts of stuff for the IBM families. And um, they used to have a, a Christmas party where Santa would give out gifts. I remember with IBM, we used to have a big holiday party every year down at the country club. Uh, so I remember going to that when I was real little. The kids were eligible to receive a gift up until the age of eight, I think it was. Santa was there and you get uh, presents and that was always big highlights uh, of the year. And there were so many kids at one point that it was a three-day event. Obviously having, you know, a major corporation is a huge employer has a huge impact on the community. Well, Endicott Johnson did also. Um, we live in an Endicott Johnson home and um, again they were wonderful to their wonderful to their employees they would go ahead and buy their homes for them build them and then the people would pay them back a little bit at a time every week and we're really responsible uh, for a lot of the civic projects uh, that are left in this area particularly carousels parks and a whole host of other uh, civic contributions to our community that still remain today yes. Yes, we've got all the carousels in the world here, so. Uh, the carousels around town, I grew up in West Endicott, so I spent a lot of time in the West Endicott Park playing basketball down there. Great experience for you know, everything, you know, I mean, they, they provided a lot to this community, a whole lot, you know. When they, when they started to fade, you know, it shows. Oh man, the decline of IBM. I don't remember the year really, to be honest with you. It's probably a good 20 years ago. I was sold in, I think, 2001. It started changing really about the mid 80s. It was like a slow decline. It wasn't like boom, you know, all at once. It seemed like it was a slow decline. IBM pulled most of it out there. There's still people here at IBM, but not as many. We really didn't know how much of a decline when it was happening. We just felt like it happened. Yes, when I first started working at IBM, we had like 15,000 people. Now if you got 200, you're lucky. I think leaving was was a pure business decision. I, I think they found they could get things done cheaper somewhere else. And so they moved it. Obviously affected so many families in the whole community economically and um, it's certainly been a challenge. There was a long period of time of regional economic decline 
that was really centered on the fact that when you have a, a handful of companies that are the anchor or propping up of an entire region, when those companies downsize or close altogether or move to other areas, it's going to leave a massive void that uh, no other major companies are, uh, are there to fill. Uh, on a personal note, it was more like a, uh, the loyalty to the employees wasn't there. They, you know, they, they, they put out for you and they were loyal to IBM and then IBM would turn around and bit by bit they were chipping away at it. You know. You know, when you talk about you know the 60s, 70s, and 80s, uh, it was a different era and it was a different generation. There were a lot less regulations. IBM used chemicals, and, and not that they dumped them, but they just sort of seeped into the the ground. Back in the days, you had EJs and you had IBM, and everybody had their own ways of doing things. You know, everything was hush hush back then. Supposedly affected groundwater and stuff like that. There's a lot of unanswered questions, I guess. Back in the days, they had the dry clean place on North Street. All the chemicals and everything else, so what did they dump? <laughs> no one's ever going to know that answer. You know, you do need to acknowledge the realities of, uh, of what happened and how that impacted a community. And here we are, you know, generations later, but people are still very conscious. So I think, you know, when you do have uh, large companies proposing to go into an area, um, whether it's, you know, manufacturing or anything that involves, uh, you know, lithium, batteries, yeah, it, it does make you think twice. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, historically we've had some environmental issues in the area, in part because of the industrial uh, work that's been here. I think we've learned, I think we've learned some of those lessons. People don't want to get caught in the trap where um, we're in such a state of economic decline that we'll take anything, um, no matter what it is. You know, some people want, want those industries to come here and, and they're willing to sacrifice those neighborhoods. A lot of times they vote no on things that a lot of people say, why'd you do that? Because, I, it, because the neighborhood to me is what's important. It's the people who live here that are going to make this community. Sometimes there's controversy in the type of activities that some uh, companies that, you know, engage in. And so um, you obviously have to be very conscious of that. Fifty years ago, the complexion of Little Italy was the north side of Endicott was it was predominantly Italian. But over the years, um, people die, people move. Complexion has changed. So you know, the heritage part of it is it's struggling. Actually, I think you'll find most service organizations are shrinking. They're not growing. And uh, that's a national, that's whether it's the Hot Rod Association or Kiwanis, people don't have that community spirit, I don't think. It's not as Italian based as, as it had been. That a lot of people have moved out, the younger ones don't stay, you know, I mean, you guys are going to get done with BU and where are you going to go? Not going to stay here. The world is more mobile now. Young people like you, you know, you, you get a degree from Binghamton University and you're probably not going to stay in Endicott, New York. In the old days, you know, the grandmothers were here, the families were here, the kids were here, everybody stayed here, you know, so it, it, it's just very different, very different. The, the Italian community definitely is shrinking. The younger generation is not as interested, the older generation is dying. There's no replacing So the attrition just takes over, and that's that. Uh, it's a sad situation, I think. At one time, when people didn't have cars, all the houses were built right around the factories, right? But that's not like that anymore. So the, the world is just very different than it used to be. Everything was in a neighborhood before. You needed something, you go, you know, you go down to the, go down to Badalini's Bakery. I need bread. I need dough. I need sauce. And they'd have it. There are some of us that are trying to keep it alive. Hopefully, hopefully we're able to, to survive. But it, but it is difficult. Well, I, I think the future for the area in the southern tier is bright. It's 
getting back to where it used to be. The more I've seen of the world, the more I realize this is uh, the only place I would have rather been born and raised. I think it's coming back. I think the future is bright. You know, we have a lot of proud people that are from this community and have stayed in this community like myself. And we're willing to do whatever we can to make things better. And it's important to keep an open mind and look at new opportunities. No, I think it's a turnaround with BU and the two hospitals and the two main hospitals that we have here. You know, we've got the pharmaceutical school now, you know, and then we have the nursing school. And, you know, we're thankful for Binghamton University. You have uh, multiple educational institutions with SUNY Broome and uh, Binghamton University. You have two very strong hospital systems in Lourdes and UHS. So we do have a very strong, vibrant local economy, but that diversity uh, is very important to ensure that we don't repeat the mistakes uh, that we saw over the course of the last several decades. I'm a town of union councilman, and we have invested a lot of money in our parks, as well as the village has done the same thing, you know, <laughs> restoring the merry grounds and building new playgrounds, and so we're seeing a lot more activity in our parks uh, like we used to when, when I was younger. So I think I think there's a lot of good things uh, that are going on. We wanted to do our part as members of the community to improve things and you know create small businesses, try to bring more jobs to the area. You know, reinvent our town in a different way. And the future is bright. There's still a long way to go, uh, but these la this last decade or so has been a tremendous decade of growth and development regionally.